October 1, 2017, Mandalay Bay Security Officer Jesus Campos is on a routine security check, assigned to a room alarm on the 32nd floor. This was the last call of my night. You were heading home in your head. In my head, I was home free after this. He has no idea he's about to become an accidental hero on what would become one of the most horrific nights in American history. As shown in this rendering provided exclusively to ABC News by MGM, once on the 30th floor, he takes the stairs up to the 32nd, but finds the exit door jammed. So he walks up to the elevator and takes it back down. When did something seem off to you? Uh, when I noticed the metal L bracket that was secured, that hold the door secured. That bracket, strategically placed there by a man staying in the suite just a few feet away. I didn't know what was going on, just simply because that's not normal. I had a call our security dispatch. I was transferred to engineering dispatch. As he walks back into the hallway to check that room alarm, turns out a nanny a few doors down left their door ajar. He hears a strange noise coming from that suite. I thought it was drill noises. Like drilling? Drilling. The massacre has just begun. Back on the 32nd floor, Campos, who is unarmed, continues walking down this hallway. He passes a room service cart that the shooter is rigged with surveillance cameras. It's either that or the sound of the stairwell door closing that alerts the shooter. He fires through the door and at Campos. I was struck and I went to get cover. I had to take a moment to realize what was going on. Suddenly you're under fire. Yes, I went to go lift up my pant leg and I saw the blood coming down. Campos takes cover in this doorway alcove. There's about a two feet indent. It's enough to lean back and stay back. Three, one, two. He radios for help. Hey, there's a fire in uh, 32, one, three, five. Back in the hotel, two key moments are happening almost simultaneously. Across the Mandalay Bay from the shooter's position, guards in the security office are getting news of what's happening at the concert. Meanwhile, Stephen Schuck, an engineer, is riding an elevator to the 32nd floor in response to Campos's earlier call about that L bracket. Pushing his maintenance cart, he walks out of the elevator and straight into danger. I started to hear the shooting out towards the crowd. Well, I didn't know that at the time. I had no idea what was going on at the time. What did it sound like to you? It sounded like a jackhammer because you never expect to hear something like that. I noticed him. I said, get cover. It's not safe. At that moment in time, there was more rounds being dispersed. Suddenly, Shuck himself is under fire. Something hit me in the back as I was jumping into cover. At the time, I was like, oh, you know, I might be shot. Someone's firing a gun up here. Someone's firing a rifle on the 32nd floor down the hallway. Those men from the security office hear Shuck's alert and hustle towards the elevators. I thought if I don't come out of this hallway alive, I wanted to communicate for Metro and first responders to get up there because this is where the shooter is. Shannon, call the police. Someone's firing a gun up here. Someone's firing a rifle on the 32nd floor down the hallway. Control units responding to 32. Inside the Mandalay Bay, Stephen Shuck, the engineer pinned down on the 32nd floor with security guard Jesus Campos, have alerted authorities to the shooter's location. Watch for weapons and the people coming out. They force open that bolted door. Since the night of October 1st, the story of what happened in this hallway on the 32nd floor has only been talked about never seen until now. Jesus was coming here to check this door, which had been left ajar by a nanny who wanted to check on the kids across the hall. Chunks of wall are missing because it's been taken out as evidence because shrapnel and bullets were flying down this hallway, shot from all the way in the other end. And as we get closer to where the shooter was hiding out, you can see more of the debris, more of the drywall, more of the soot. Behind this door, investigators would find 24 weapons, ranging from AR-15s with bump stocks to AR-10s with armor-piercing bullets, which are legal to buy but illegal to sell. The first responders, paramedics, EMTs, for responding so fast. 
and also the people on the ground that were getting injured people into their vehicles and taking them to the hospital. I just thought that um, those, to me, are just my heroes, you know. You saved countless lives down below. What goes through your mind when you think that? Just doing my job. I did it to the best of my ability, and then some. These two unlikely heroes, now back to work, carrying with them one solemn vow. I feel like I got a second chance, and 58 people didn't, and I need to live a good life to honor them. <laughs>